she added a little twist onto this batch in that there was more fat on Virginia so she had a great idea to utilize this fat to make soaps. I'm just gonna give that a moment to sink in but she ended up using Virginia's fat and she admitted to adding a caustic soda to it in order to create the perfect soap. <laughs> Crazy ladies say what? Well, that was an intro and a half. <laughs> For those of you who are new, hi, first of all, it is awesome to see you here. My name is Latasha, and this over here is Bella Monsoon. So this is the first of a super exciting series which I have been working on for a while now and I am so excited to bring it into volition because this is an idea I've been wanting to do for quite some time and this is combining one of my passions which is makeup of course with one of my big interests which is true crime and understanding why people do what they do so i am so excited to combine these two together and bring you the most disturbing the most thrilling the most strange and the most bizarre stories that you might never have heard of but i guarantee you will never forget trust me today's story is mind-blowing so i also feel it's pertinent to give a slight little warning here i will be giving trigger warnings if content is a little bit too graphic or something that you don't really want to listen to or while you are eating or just ate or would like to keep your food where it's supposed to be yeah i will be sure to give a warning before that kind of content and just in general a general warning so i'm just gonna go ahead and do that and uh listen <clears throat> warning warning some of the content expressed in this video may be potentially disturbing to others viewer discretion is advised okay <laughs> now that that's out the way let us get on to the really weird stuff so today's story takes place in the absolutely beautiful country of pizza and love and all things magical, Italy. So in 1894, Leonardo Cianciulli was born. And what was slightly different about the way she was brought into this world is that her mother was assaulted by her father. But unfortunately, the time and the era that Amelia was living in didn't really afford her the opportunity to to leave him or to do much else other than get married and so this was how Leonardo was conceived and this is the family that Leonardo was brought into so as you can imagine the relationship between Mariano her father and Emilia her mother was not great when she was born her mother held a lot of resentment towards her and wasn't very warm in the least and this could all be understood in terms of how Leonardo was conceived so Leonardo's childhood lacked a lot of warmth and she grew up feeling like a burden to her mother so these feelings expressed themselves in Leonardo attempting suicide twice before she was even 18 years old she tried both times to commit suicide by hanging, but the first time the rope broke and the second time someone found her and took her down. So I'd like to believe if she was living in this day and age, her story would have turned out a little bit different because now there is a bigger emphasis on the importance of mental health. Yes, we are not where we should be, but there's a lot more gravity placed on the importance of mental health education, mental health awareness and especially focusing on the mental health of our youth. So because there wasn't that emphasis on actually receiving the mental health care that she very much needed, Leonardo turned to eating glass for example so that it would cut her from the inside or so she believed and during this time she also became incredibly superstitious and this is something that kind of foretold 
what was going to happen later on in her life and that kind of set her path. So she felt extremely lost in the situation she was in and extremely vulnerable and so she sought out the help of fortune tellers, of clairvoyants, of palm readers to give her some clarity on what was going on in her life and how to deal with it. So during one of her earlier sessions with a fortune teller, she was told that she would have many, many children, but they would all die before she did. And so this was something that kind of always lived at the back of her mind, even though she was not ready to have kids yet and she hadn't tried to conceive yet. So during this time, whilst she was growing up, as I mentioned before, her relationship with her mother was incredibly strained. Her mother was incredibly cold towards her. This treatment was further intensified and made worse by the fact that her father passed away and her mother remarried and had more children whom she treated completely different to how she treated Leonardo. So this made a bad situation even worse because now Leonardo was forced to be surrounded by her half-siblings who were treated as children should be with love and kindness and warmth and she was still antagonized and treated coldly by her mother. So in 1917, she was around the age of 24, she met Raphael and she decided to get married. Now this would have been all good and well except this was not the man that her mom wanted her to marry. And the reason for that wasn't because he wasn't good for her or he wasn't kind to her. No, the reason was because he was not wealthy. So her family came from a very impoverished part of Italy and her mother believed that if she could marry rich, then the entire family would be guaranteed a better quality of life. So at this point, Leonardo was just exhausted. She was tired, she was hotful, as we'd say in South Africa. And she was like, no, this is not gonna happen. I'm, I'm not doing it, I'm sick and tired of you. It's not happening. And her mother, of course, responded in not the greatest of ways. And she began to chastise her. She told her that she would need to leave now. She was a disappointment. And she cursed her and her very existence. So in 1921, which was about four years later, she moved to the south of Italy with her husband, of course. And they both got jobs there and they were happy for a while until she was arrested for fraud. Bummer. So after she got out of jail, she did her time. Did the crime, did the time. And she got out of jail and they decided to move. They moved to another little town and much like the rest of her life, bad luck just seemed to plague her and follow her existence. And an earthquake struck. It destroyed their entire home and it killed a couple thousand people as well in that town and they moved again. This move however was set to be their final move, thank goodness because we all know how stressful and crappy moving is. So this is where Leonardo started to put down her roots and she opened up a little natural holistic crafts store and she also started telling fortunes and she would tell her customers that she could make their dreams come true. I think she thought she was a genie or something. No judgment, just saying. So this fortune teller told her that if she wanted her next baby to survive she would have to make an offering and... and communicate with the dark spirits. So Leonardo believed her and she did what was expected and lo and behold her next baby survived. So what is known about Leonardo is that she became pregnant 17 times. 10 of those children unfortunately passed away during infancy and the other three were miscarriages and so only four of her pregnancies actually ended up in a healthy child that made it past their youth. 
this occurrence of the sacrifice leading to a healthy baby being born further solidified the fact that Leonardo was doing something correct and that the fortune teller was indeed right. And this confirmed her superstitious beliefs and this further created the idea in her mind that in order to get a favorable result, something had to be exchanged. Which is a really important thing to remember for just a little bit into the story. So Leonardo really also held the belief that her mother had put a curse on her and her children and this is why she also kept losing her kids and so she vowed to do anything and everything in her willpower to protect her children. I would imagine in the way that she was not really protected as a child. As time went on her children grew up and unfortunately her marriage with her husband was not working out and so they decided to divorce. At this stage, she had her shop, the people in the community loved her and truly believed that she could make their dreams come true and she was very respected in their community. So everything was all hunky-dory and life went on in the way that it always had until World War II came around and the government started drafting soldiers for the war. Now, as her children grew up, she had grown incredibly close to her eldest son, Giuseppe. And Giuseppe was then chosen to go and fight in the war. So he was conscripted to go and fight in the war. And this drove Leonardo crazy because she believed that this was the end and that he would die and he would not return to her. And at that point in time, she vowed, she took a solemn vow that she would do anything in her power to ensure that he survived. After visiting fortune tellers, he came to the conclusion that she was going to sacrifice a life to save his life. And so she started to look for these potential victims. And so her first victim appeared. And her first victim was a 73 year old lady by the name of Faustina Setti. So Faustina approached Leonardo because she was incredibly lonely and all she ever wanted in her life was to find a companion. And so Leonardo convinced her that she could of course make her dreams come true but there was going to be a price what was the price you might ask five gold coins ten shillings the equivalent of a golden goose egg no her price was for Faustina to sell everything that she owned and to give all of her worldly belongings to Leonardo and then to further write letters to her entire family saying that she had left to go and be with the man of her dreams, the man that she was going to spend the rest of her life with, and that they should not contact her. So Leonardo told her that there was a man waiting for her. Leonardo had sorted it all out and he was in Croatia. Faustina went ahead and she was so excited and she sold up everything. She got all of her affairs in order. She wrote all her letters. So she came to visit Leonardo on the night before she left, giddy with excitement, and Leonardo fixed her a drink, which was drugged, and promptly knocked her out. And this is where I would like to add my trigger warning. There is graphic details expressed in the following clips. So do with it what you may, but I just wanted to let you know. So after Faustina was drugged, Leonardo then bludgeoned her to death. After she was dead, Leonardo then decided to take a boning knife and to cut her body into nine pieces. But wait, there's more. So she wasn't just content at throwing these nine pieces away and she decided to cook these pieces. And at this stage, one might think the story ends there, but then one would be sorely mistaken. As per later accounts by Leonardo herself, she detailed how she waited for the blood to coagulate and then she popped it in a pan into the oven until it turned into a brown powder. But wait, there's more. 
She then took that brown powder and she added it to some milk, some egg, some flour, some sugar, you know, just your standard recipe. And she made tea cakes. Yeah, I'm just gonna give that a moment to sink in. She made tea cakes from coagulated blood. And of course, other ingredients. Yeah, not really a recipe that's going to win recipe of the year, I feel. Anyway, she then took all of the organs and the other organic matter, she cooked it into a sludge, she took buckets of that sludge out, and she dropped it at the septic waste facility, and she was done with that. And she happily moved on using the leftover blood to make chocolate, which she then shared with the neighborhood kids. And she, of course, fed the tea cakes to not only herself and her most loved Giuseppe, but also to her community at large. Because the more, the merrier. Yeah. I just, I'm not sure how I'd feel about that after the fact. Can you imagine just sitting there after learning what she's done and thinking to yourself, Wow. I used to have tea cakes by Leonardo every weekend. Anyway, moving on. So one would then imagine that she was kind of done, right? Because she needed to sacrifice someone to ensure that her son would survive. But she was not done. She was not done just yet. And so came along Francesca Suavi. And once again, Francesca was in a vulnerable state, but this time, instead of seeking a lover or a companion, she was seeking her dream job. And of course, once again, Leonardo told her that she could make her dreams come true. So Leonardo did the same dance and played the same ruse with this woman. So once again, Francesca followed suit just as Faustina had before her and once again Leonardo pulled the exact same stunt. The day before Francesca was due to leave, Leonardo invited her over, drugged her, bludgeoned her to death and cut her up into pieces. And one would like to believe, one would hope to believe that it had ended there, but once again you would be wrong. Because then along came Virginia. Virginia was a little bit younger, she was in her 50s, but she was also seeking work. She was desperately seeking work and she jumped at the opportunity when Leonardo told her that she could secure her job. All she needed to do was X, Y, Z. So as before, she told her you need to sell your assets, you need to pack everything up, then you need to come visit me before you go and everything will be good. But the only problem with this is that Virginia was so excited that she told everyone. She told her mom, she told her dad, she told her sister, she told her friends. She was overjoyed at the prospect of a new life and her dream job. So Virginia did what Leonardo said and she pitched up the day before she left. And once again, Leonardo drugged her and killed her by bludgeoning her to death, whereafter she cut her into pieces and proceeded to cook them. However, she added a little twist onto this batch in that there was more fat on Virginia, so she had a great idea to utilize this fat to make soaps. I'm just going to give that a moment to sink in, but she ended up using Virginia's fat and she admitted to adding a caustic soda to it in order to create the perfect soaps. And you know, if that wasn't bad enough, in later accounts, Leonardo did mention how Virginia tasted better than the others, that the tea cakes that she had made from her tasted sweeter. And she likened this to trying out a steak. Some steaks just taste better than other pieces of steak, and some bacon just tastes better than other pieces of bacon, depending on where you get it from, and on the animal. So 
Leonardo was going about her life, she was living her best life, she was doing her thing, and then Virginia's sister couldn't find her. Virginia's sister realized she was missing and she went to the police. The police then came a knocking to Leonardo because that was the last place that anyone remembered seeing her. Virginia had previously told her sister about Leonardo's business and what Leonardo was doing for her because as I mentioned earlier she was so so excited and she wanted everyone to know. That was the problem. And so the police came a knocking and Leonardo sat down with them. She invited them in. She expressed her sadness and her concern that this poor, poor woman had gone missing and she would do anything she could to help them. They were not convinced, however, as the folk in her area had started noticing that some of the women who had disappeared had come into Leonardo's shop and they just didn't seem to leave or they had had some connection with Leonardo before they went missing and so the police unfortunately didn't have any evidence so they couldn't really do much about the situation. Virginia's family strongly still believed that Leonardo in some way or form had had something to do with the disappearance of Virginia and so they did not let up and so the police did not let up and the police then turned their attention to Giuseppe. It was the simple threat of Giuseppe getting in trouble that prompted Leonardo to confess. Because it was still war times, there was not the ability for her to stand trial right away, so she spent a good few years in jail awaiting her trial. So when she was finally sentenced, she was sentenced to three years in a criminal asylum and a further 30 years in a jail. So during this time, she wrote many detailed journals and memoirs, including one that was entitled An Embittered Soul's Confessions. And within these journals and within this memoir, she actually detailed what she had done to each victim. And in a way, she detailed recipes. She put amounts and methods and tools and utensils that she had used to create what she ended up creating from each woman's body. Yeah, if that doesn't get cookbook of the year, I'm not quite sure what would, right? The police still held Giuseppe for trial, but there was no evidence in any way or form to tie him or involve him directly in the murders and subsequent creations that Leonardo created. So also what was in her journals was something that was kind of out of the usual in that the way she spoke in her journals is that she had two distinct personalities. The one personality was how she referred to herself in her business form with her own, with a different nickname. She used two different nicknames to kind of separate these personalities. And the one nickname referred to her in her business and in her daily life and in the way that everyone understood her. And the other nickname, which was a nickname that her birth father had given her, was how she described herself when she was committing the killings. And this would have been a really interesting concept to go into if this wasn't in the 1900s and there was a bigger emphasis on learning and understanding more about why people do what they do. So Leonardo went on to actually live until the age of 76, where after she died of natural causes. She passed away in those three years that she was in the criminal asylum after she had served her 30 years in jail. So my last little tidbit of information for you today. To this day there is a museum in Rome and this museum houses some pretty interesting things. So some of these interesting items include pots that Leonardo used to cook the bodies of her victims as well as her deboning knife and other utensils. Yeah, so I'm not sure if any of you watching this video have actually been to this museum 
or perhaps you live in Italy or Rome and you've heard of this museum but I'd be interested to know what else is actually in this museum I think it probably houses a lot of pretty weird things that we wouldn't even guess I mean before I heard this story to be honest I've seen hundreds and hundreds of serial killer documentaries true crime stories and I've not once not once heard of someone making soaps and tea cakes out of bodies not once like ornaments necklaces yeah I've heard that I've seen that but not once tea cakes like specifically tea cakes and soap mind blown and as I was doing research and as I was looking into the story more and more, it just got weirder and weirder and stranger and stranger and more gruesome. So if you have any ideas or stories you'd like me to check out for my next videos and do some research on, then please leave them down in the comment section. Or alternatively, you can DM them to me on any of my social media channels. <laughs> If I end up using your idea, I will definitely leave you a shout out in the beginning of my next video too. So yeah, that was the end of the first episode of Makeup and Mayhem True Crime with Bella Monsoon. Um, and for my South African viewers, I have some really insane stories coming up this season on Makeup and Mayhem that you are going to be sure you don't want to miss. So until next time my loves, stay safe, stay awesome, wash your hands for at least 20 seconds with soap and water, 